David Kleeman has spent a lifetime championing quality for children's media. For 25 years, he's explored, judged, and put the spotlight on only the best for children. He's constantly rethinking what a quality screen-based experience should be. He does this in more, many ways, including cinema and concerts like the pre genoese who we hate to say that, and as a senior fellow of the Fred Rogers Center um, for Early Learning and Children's Media, and at the American Center for Children's Media, and now at Play Collective, you can see this is one man with a mission. You will soon get to meet David personally, and you'll understand that he is tuned in to, to what counts, and that's children. He is excellent at carving through a very foggy business with provoking conversation. He keeps developers thinking, and educators and researchers doing their best work. His voice is heard worldwide as a moral compass, and a pa he's a passionate evangelist for excellence in children's publishing. I'd like to call David Lehman to the stage. I know well who's uh, stood here the past few years before me, and that just deepens the honor for me. Uh, Dale Darty, his work to spark the, the maker movement, calls to mind a wonderful quote from Fred Rogers. No matter what the machine may be, it was people who thought it up and made it, and it's people who make it work. Mark Schlichting, last year, exemplifies for me the idea that if you start from insight, empathy, and creativity, technology will adapt to accommodate your vision. And Gu Wang stood here and serenaded us with a digital musical instrument he had made himself. All these pioneers make wonderful, tangible things that engage, delight, entertain, challenge, and inspire children. I recognized early on that I wasn't cut out to build things, to make things, but that I had both an inclination and an ability to make things better. In some contexts, that would be called being a busybody. But I've always tried to use to support and extend creators' visions and not usurp them. Engage creators in thoughtful give and take, introduce them to new perspectives or possibilities, and encourage them to keep refining, because in children's media, good enough isn't good enough. I love watching producers perfect tiny details of their program, their game, or their app, things that no child, no parent would ever notice, but they would. My pioneer's journey can be traced actually to a single hour in 1975, a lecture by one of the creators of Sesame Street, Jerry Lesser, when I was a college freshman. I was already kind of unusual. I was a male studying to be a preschool teacher at Harvard. <laughs> My roommates were all reading political philosophy and studying organic chemistry, and I was watching The Electric Company and reading The Little Engine That Could. I think I won. <laughs> a pioneer's view changes constantly. In 40 years in children's media, I've never been bored. Woody Allen said that 80% of success is just showing up, but I think I've been really lucky about showing up at the right time. I started out in what you might call Oxcart days when children's media meant TV. There wasn't very much of it and none of it, almost none of it, was developmentally focused. We traded up to a cattle team with the arrival of multi-channel cable and a horseless carriage with the advent of CD-ROMs. When packaged media gave way to the internet, the uh, rutted pioneer track became the information superhighway. And the horseless carriage that we were on originally now speeds like a Ferrari, but it's got the load capacity of an 18-wheeler. We've gone from four channels to YouTube, from the box in the corner to anything, anytime, anywhere, from what we want to tell you to what do you want to know. I can't imagine a more stimulating and challenging era for blazing a trail through the world of children and media. And I've had great companions in doing it. Uh, pioneers' survival depended on surrounding themselves with people with complementary uh, knowledge and skills, but on a journey like that, they better be good company too. 
I've had mentors and protectors every step of the way. I've had the head of programming at PBS move me from department to department until I learned all facets of broadcasting. Ten years after a short informational interview, a man named Jim Fellows remembered me and entrusted me with a festival and center. He found it a job I had for 25 years. And now my Play Collective colleagues are giving me a really powerful base of expertise and insights from which to launch new pioneering explorations. But it's really the people that I've met along the way that made the pioneering possible. Most of what I know about children, learning, and media comes from sitting up late at night with uh, the legends and the disruptors who come to Duster Magic and other conferences like this. I'm getting a little too old for the late nights, but you're never too, too old to listen. Most people know me as a connector. I love to help people with a passion realize their visions, and that often involves linking them to people with complementary information or ideas. I often joke that in an industry that's built on non-disclosure agreements, I've actually built a career building safe places for people to disclose. And children's media is special in that regard. I can't think of another area where people are so generous with their time and expertise. A friend of mine who's been in this business as long as I have, who's been making interactive media since 1977, loves to say she's been on the cutting edge so long it's a wonder she hasn't bled to death. <laughs> Maybe tonight I can borrow and adapt that using a little something from Oregon Trail since we're talking about pioneers and say, I've been pioneering so long it's a wonder I haven't died of dysentery. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think I'm anywhere near done, so thank you very much for this tonight and Westward Hope.